What's going on, guys? One love out to everybody. We got UFC 281, Asanya versus Pereira. Prediction breakdown, guys. Pretty decent card here. Got a lot of good fights in this card. Got an Israel Asanya versus Alex Pereira, part three. First time they faced up in kickboxing twice, and Israel Asanya lost the fight, right? We got Cardas Praza versus Willie Zane. We got Dustin Pereira versus Michael Chandler. We even got Frankie Edgar versus Chris Gutierrez. So let's go. Before I get started though guys, <clears throat> hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to this channel and also check out my Patreon account for my face-off predictions and my prop plays because what I do afterwards, I go watch the face-offs and whatever I may see on both opponents, maybe eye contact, maybe the mannerisms, the way of the body look, if they make weight or not, I may make changes but I'm going to leave it on my Patreon account. Also, donate to my PayPal account, help out the channel a lot. You can help me out to make these videos, you know, more consistently. Um, put my energy into these videos, right? Because you remember that I have a, a lot more other things that I'm working on. So this takes a lot of energy. And with this card here, I put a lot of energy into it because I watch all the fights, basically. A majority of the fights, I watch all the embedded, I watch the wins and everything like that. So I spend a lot of time on this card. So the more, you know, you can help me out and donate to the channel, and you, and you can donate to my PayPal account, then it makes it easier, easier for me to spend more time on these videos and make better videos, right? Like this card here, I should do pretty good on it because I spent a lot of energy into it. The last card, not too well because I didn't spend a lot of energy into it because I had a lot more things working on. So you guys support the channel. And if you support me and then put more energy into me, then I can put my energy out there <laughs> where I can spend more time on it. Because this is my moment, this is my time, this is my energy I'm giving you guys. Alright, so we're going to jump in this real quick guys, you'll knock this out. I'm um, over there in New York, Madison Square Gardens, let's get it, we got 14 fights in the card. Knock this out, first fight here we got Carlos Uber versus Nikolai Negromani. Carlos here coming from um, Easy Camp, um, striking up bag, a kickboxing base. Um, I feel like he doesn't have the experience though. And I feel like he doesn't handle pressure too well. So this is a guy where you start walking him down and keep taking him out of his range because he wants long range. So if you keep pushing forward, you keep putting him against a cage, hit him with some dirty boxing, some Dan Henderson style, go for some takedown on him, pressure, 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 you don't do too well, right? That being said, his opponent here, Nikolai Negomani, he's known for pressure and he's known for that Dan Henderson, nasty, dirty boxing, uppercuts, put against a cage, grab you, slam you on the ground, groan and pony, even look for submissions. And he will strike with you, but his striking is not as technical as Carlos's. But he doesn't care because he's just going in there to close the distance and beat you up. Right? I'm not saying Carlos can't corner him, but we've seen in Carlos fights, when you start putting mad pressure on him, if he can't knock you out, he doesn't do too well and he breaks under pressure and he gets tired. That's the reason why I'm going to go with Carlos here. Carlos is, I mean... <laughs> Not Carlos, guys. This is the reason why I'm going to go with Nikolai here. Because Nikolai, in my opinion, is more durable. Right? He can take a hit, man. This guy can take a licking and keep on ticking. And he's mentally strong and physically strong. He's going to push forward. A lot of high pace from this guy. A lot of pressure, which Carlos don't like. Carlos like a long range. He likes to stay on the outside. That's where Carlos shines. Nikolai is going to come forward. That's it. Carlos could catch him. But I must say, Nikolai and Negromani by KOTQ guys in the second round. I'm not confident because ain't it possible in this game to take one shot in the chin. Face not meant to get hit, man. So if Carlos catches him, boom. And then, you know, he doesn't handle it too well, then we could see Negromani get knocked out. It's possible. All right? But I'm going to go with Nikolai and Negromani by KOTQ second round, guys. Next fight, we have Julio Ars versus Montel Jackson. Um, Julio Ars, sir, boxing is... Not bad, man. Very technical with the boxing. BJJ black belt here. Um, but he's kind of slow on the movement and he doesn't handle a shot too well. You know, that's the thing about him. He, he can't really trust his chin there. He gets flash knockdowns. He will recover, but sometimes he doesn't. So I feel his durability is not there, man. With Jackson, Jackson's going to have the three inch of height and the five inch of reach which is freaking massive and jackson can hit jackson got some power on him jackson got a little wrestling base on him too and his defense for takedown and submissions are not bad and his crumbles are not bad either back to his foot so man 
Jackson doesn't even have to go in too far, you know, to close the distance too far in. You know, he's going to be right there because reach. And I feel a horse don't handle a hit. And I feel holy horse is, he will move around. And sometimes he's on the back foot a lot. But it's just his, it's just his output. It's just not enough. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go with Jackson here. I'm going to say Jackson by decision, guys. But I'm not confident. Because again, Julio Ars is very experienced. So we got to pay attention to the to the experienced guys. You can't just say, oh, Jackson, because, you know, I mean, you never know. Julio Ars could come in and start getting takedowns and, fi and then find a submission. But I'm like Imanta Jackson by decision. I'm not confident. Next fight, we got Mike Chizano versus Sing Wu Choi. Mike Chizano here can get flat footed. He has a lot of hands in him, but, you know, he, he doesn't really throw much. Not much output from this guy, man. And uh, sometimes he's kind of frozen. Like, don't move his leg at all. Um, he's there to get hit. I mean, and that's basically it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that he's not a good fighter. He, I mean, he would look for takedowns and he would throw shots and everything like that and punches. But I feel like his output, he does, just doesn't really do much. You know what I'm saying? And then he gets stationary. Um, against Wu Choi, Wu, Wu Choi is going to be on him. He's going to be accurate. Pinpoint accurate. He's going to be a quicker fighter. Um, yeah, that's basically it. He's going to be like a bullet. He's going to be accurate. And Choi can strike. And like I said, I'm not saying that, you know, like um, Mike can, you know, he can't win the fight. All these guys have a chance of winning the fight. This is just my prediction. This is just what I feel. I mean, I could be wrong, right? But uh, I just feel that Choi is just a better striker here, speed advantage. He does more. He has more output, um, punching power. So I'm liking Choi here. I must say Choi by KOTQ guys in the first round. Next fight here, we got Karolina Kovalkovic versus Silvana Gomez. Um, KK showed better you know, better skills in her last fight. You know, she showed that, you know, that she can still win fights because she's been on a little five-fight loss streak here. Um, but the person she fought was Felicia Herring, who she fought before, and Felicia Herring is not retired because she was going to retire off of that fight. That was her last fight. And Felice had a lot of damage, like bad knees and all these things. And you can tell that in the fight, she wasn't really in it. Look like she was there to get a paycheck, and then and, and it is what it is, right? But I'm um, not taking anything out from KK. You know, she went in there and she, went, and she won the fight because she has to go in there and perform, and she did. But again, Savannah, though, man, I feel Savannah is just a better striker here, man. Quicker at the hands, crisp boxing. Her right hand got mad power on it to set up off the jab. Um, her boxing is kind of remind me of, um, like, you know, like Amanda Nunes, Valentina Tichenko. You know what I'm saying? She had that, that, that um, punching power. Right, where sometimes you see a lot of women in the sport, sometimes they don't punch like that. You know, they don't have that Amanda Nunes and Tuchenko kind of punching. I feel that Savona has that power. And with KK, she's not really a good striker like that, man. You know what I mean? And if she throws her hands, sometimes the hands are just out there. And I can see Savona just coming over the top of her, right? I mean, it's, it is what it is, man. And she's accurate. I mean, Savona can hit, man. She has good boxing skills, in my opinion. I mean, from what I've seen. So I must say Savannah by KOTQ in the first round, guys. Next fighter, we got Upman Azatar versus Matt Vivola. Um, Upman here, this guy is raw, man. I mean, this guy goes to work. I mean, he works the body, works the top, works the head. He's boxing, doesn't look bad. He's got devastating hands man this guy like he will leap in from a long distance cover range he cover distance quick i should say and when he covers distance quick over the top he knocks you out man i mean this this guy's heavy-handed and he stays on you he's his i mean his his straightforward pressure is just like on you on you on you on you his pace got a heavy heavy pace and it doesn't stop doesn't seem to get tired much either and he recovers quick his grown game, he can get taken down, but he scrambles well, and he will also look for takedowns. And his and his defense, his defense is not bad either. I mean, this this guy is like on you, man. Against Matt Favola, though, Matt Favola kind of possesses a similar kind of qualities. You know, he come in there and let the hands go kind of wild, like we saw in his last fight here against Valdez, and he got the he got the finish in that fight. The difference against Otman, though, 
is that Atman pack power, and I feel Atman has more power than Matt, and I feel Atman is just more um, pinpoint accurate with the shots, you know what I'm saying? And mostly the power. So if Matt goes toe to toe, man, I mean, I can see Atman getting a win here, man. Matt Favola may mix it up because Matt Favola has a wrestling base on him where he will shoot and go for take on ground and pound. But like I said, what I see from Atman, man, I mean, he, he has some good ground defense and scrambling. And I feel I feel that Matt Favola, you know, he has the more experience, in my opinion, fight tougher competition. But, man, the fight starts standing up. And I just feel Atman is just, it's just a power, man. If he touches Matt, Matt gonna go up. I I like Upman here. I'ma say Upman by KOTQ in the first round, guys. And I'm not confident. Again, when you got both guys throwing hands like that, even though Upman, you know, I, I feel has the better hands, the power. Chin ain't made to get hit. And this could be the time where Upman gets knocked out and Matt just land that one sweet shot. Happens, man. Alright, but I like Upman, KOTQ, first round. Next fight, we got Andre Proskreski versus Wilton Thurman. Um Andre here is a freaking grinder, man. This guy goes to work too. He grinds, 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 wrestle, 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 and he's heavy on top. That's basically it. And he and he can strike too. He got a heavy hands, also striking also. And he also look for submissions. You know what I mean? Most of his wins, I believe, are by submissions. Um, his opponent here, Thurman, also has submissions. BJJ black belt. But the thing about Thurman though, he slow out the movement, man. And he likes to be on his back a lot. And you don't want to be in your back when you're fighting a guy like freaking Andre, man. Don't want to be on your back, man. Even though he will put up submissions like arm bars and stuff like that, but you don't want to be in your back because Andre also has submissions. Stand up wise, I just feel like Thurman is slow at the movement, and I feel Thurman um, he let things go. You know, I mean, he will have the submission or he will have you, and then he just let go. It's like he dropped the ball. So I'm liking Andre here. I'm gonna say Andre Pokeski by KOTQ guys in the first round. Alright. Next fight here we have Aaron Blanchfield versus Molly McCann. Aaron Blanchfield here, in my opinion, is a good prospect here. She's gonna have a six inch reach, which is massive. I feel like she's pretty well rounded female here, but I'm kinda high on her. She's a good prospect. The only thing you do against Molly McCann though is that um the boxing. That's only one thing and I can say. You know, with Erin. She will come into the fight in the first round, and I guess she's trying to make adjustments, but sometimes she just dives in and her chin is there to get hit, you know, her face is there to get hit, and that's for the whole entire first round. You, you, I mean, you could touch her up. And with Molly McCann, I feel Molly McCann has a better box in here, but the ground game, I say Erin has a better ground game and submission game. So this is a fight where I'm kind of like, mm, because if Molly land that one sweet spot, it could hurt Erin on the foot, because Erin has to be a weirdo, man, like when she's coming in, you know, keep the chin tucked. Maybe keep the hands up, you know what I mean? And um, just don't keep going so direct, kind of cut angles. Um, but again, she hasn't been hurt in a fight though. So, and like I said, I'm kind of high on Erin. But I still be careful with this fight though, guys. I'm going to go with Erin Blanchfield. And I say Erin Blanchfield by decision, but be careful with this one though, man. Because like I said, I feel like it could go either way here. Next fight, we've got Dominic Reyes versus Ryan Spann. Um, Dominic Reyes here, man. <sighs> Dominic Reyes is a tough dude, man. I mean, this guy shows some mad heart, man. I mean, his last fight there against Jerry, man. I mean, he had Jerry, man, in some bad positions, but he just couldn't pull it off. You know what I mean? Against Juan Blanchfield, Juan Blanchfield, <laughs> Juan Blakovich. Um, I mean, his nose broke, you know. I mean, this guy been through hell, but. He's a tough fighter, though, man. He shows heart, and he shows that he has mad power. And, you know, this is it's a guy where he's a dangerous guy to fight, you know, when he's on. And even when he's not on, because maybe he was on in these fights, but these guys are better fighters than him. Again, Spawn, though, man, uh, Ryan Spawn, um, he's a well-rounded guy, too. But one thing about Spawn, he dropped the ball, though, man. And Rios can hit. I feel if Rios touch Spawn, he could get hurt. And when Ryan Spawn get hurt, doesn't recover too well. He doesn't recover too well, and that's just what I see. I see um, Rios winning this fight, KOTQ, and I feel Rios has a lot to prove in this fight, and he's going to come in here prepared. I feel, and then again, Spawn mix miss weight by a little bit. It wasn't even much, man. I don't know what's going like two or six, six, a little bit of six here, man. But uh, you know, you know, yeah, still you got to make weight, right? Even as even by a little bit, but um, 
na may na mas eh, um, Urias here. Mas eh, Urias by KOTQ guys in the first round. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not confident in this one because, like I said, Dominic Urias coming up for two back-to-back -back losses like that and it is devastating beatings. You just don't know how he's going to be mentally. Maybe that maybe that change him. Maybe he's never the same no more. That's something to look at too. So be careful with this one. Next fighter, we got Renato Maricano versus Brad Riddell. Um, Renato, BJJ Black Belt, um, has some strike on him too. We look for the submission, very experienced guy, but he can get hurt on the foot. And what he was doing from way back, he was doing more just stand up with the guys. Then, you know, certain guys he would pull it off. But when you fight like Jose, all those, and they fought like, you know what I'm saying, like Jong and all these other guys here, I'll fight the Korean zombie. And even Fize, he, he can't stand in front of these guys because he's not really a stand up guy, he's more Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy. So he kind of switched up his game and went back to going for takedowns. And if you can notice, he's been getting the submissions now because he's using the striking to set up for the takedowns and get the submissions because the BJJ black belt and that's what his bread and butter is that's that's where his strength is right um even against Rafael de Santos he had Rafael de Santos in the later rounds there right Brad Riddell though coming from easy camp to a lot of easy guys on this card also um this this guy's a very straightforward athletic Muay Thai grinding striker heavy handed heavy leg kicks just go for the kill man it's like a bullet but he can get submitted though and he slows down as the fight goes on. This is a fight where I'm back and forth because I could see Renato standing in front of Riddle. I mean, he, I mean, I could see Riddle finishing Renato, right? I definitely can see that. And, you know, if he does that, then he hasn't learned. But he seems like he has learned. So I don't think Renato is going to do that. I feel Renato is going to use the striking, maybe play around for a little bit and start looking for takedowns. Probably can win off of points. Possibly even get a submission because it's... I told you, Renato ground game is not a bad ground game. It's some, that's, that's where he shines. Um, and I feel Renato is just more experienced, man. Fighting Aldo. Um, what was he fought? Fought Aldo. Um, he fought Rafael Sanos, then, man. This guy fought Koreans. I mean, Cub Swanson. I mean, Jeremy Stevens, Brian Tegas. You know what I mean? I mean, he fought some tough competition, man. But with Riddell. You know, I mean, he fought Fizze and he lost a fight, but who who else has he fought? He fought Jalen Turner and he got, he got multi guillotine real quick, guillotine trouble real fast. Yeah, you, know, you see, you see what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually liking Renato for this fight, man. I'm going to go with Renato, I'm going to say Renato by submission second round, but I'm not confident. And it's a fight where it can go either way, it just all depends on the game plan. You know, and hopefully Renato doesn't stand in front of him and strike. For like all rounds because it's, I feel Riddell is a better striker here more powerful striker so it all depends on the game plan and even Ren Renato said it he said I'm going back to my BJJ because that's where he shines so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Ren Renato Renato mix it up he should win so Renato by submission second round next fight we got Dan Hooker versus Claudio Pulis Dan Hooker next guy of the easy camp here um, Dan Hooker here man um, pinpoint accurate striker when he's on, um, we saw from his last fight though, though man. I mean, he didn't do too well in his last fight. I'm trying to look for my notes here, guys. He didn't do too good in his last fight. He kind of, I don't know. I think he underestimated Arnold Allen. Took him too lightly, man. Hope he doesn't take Pulis too lightly, because Pulis will submit him. He will get him in a knee bar, and that's what Pulis is good for. His submission game. Right, so if he goes to the ground with Pulis, you better watch out for his legs, his knees. You know, he's gonna lock it up, or his, or his, or his ankles. Right, um, like I, like I said, the hooker is more known for the striking. You know, all the guys from, you know, the kickboxing gym there, um, see the kickboxing there. Those guys are more known for the striking. Right, from Easy Camp. Um, this is a big fight for Pulis, though, man. I mean, Pulis striking has been getting better. And has improved. He has a heavy left kick right now, heavy left muashigiri, and he follows up with the um, he follows up with a with a counter um left um straight on the pocket punch. But man, I feel Hooker is just a better all around striker here. But from Hooker last performance, man, it's kind of hard to say, man. I mean, like I said, Pulis is improving every fight, though, man. I'm not gonna take nothing away from this guy. And this is a guy that I used to train with way back in the days, man. I believe maybe like 209. I trained with this guy. We just roll around a couple of times. He's a younger kid, though. You know, just roll around the mat and stuff like that. But this this guy has improved, man. So you can't take nothing away from him. 
but Hooker is a tough competition, and Pulis gonna need to get this fight to the ground. He gonna need a he gonna need the submission, or unless he comes in there, you know, with just some just he just letting his hands go, you know, which he doesn't really do like that because then if he get caught, he can get hurt because it's not really as he doesn't really handle a hit and and strike like that. Yeah, you know I mean, so I'm a, I'm gonna go with Hooker though, man. But man, I'm not I'm not confident at all in this fight. I can. If 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 Hooker coming here and then un underestimate Pulis, you could get submitted. Or you never know, Pulis could even knock him out. Anything is possible in this game, man. But I must say, Dan Hooker by KOTQ guys in the first round, not confident. Next fighter, we got Frankie Edgar versus Chris Gutierrez. Frankie Edgar, man, this is gonna be his last fight here, man. And you know, I mean, hats off to Frankie Edgar. You know, all the fights. I believe with WEC also way back in the days. Was he in a WEC? He wasn't in WEC. What? I thought he was in WEC. I guess he wasn't. Okay. But a lot of UFC fights, though, from way back. UFC from, damn, from 207. So this guy been there for a while, man. This is a huge vet veteran here, man. Um, yeah, man. I mean, it's his last fight. I mean, hats off to Frankie for giving all those fights. Put his health on the line. Your health is a wealth, guys. This guy put his, his health... Just to entertain you guys, man. Holy shit. Guys, your health means everything, man. If you don't have your health, you're screwed. Remember, all these things here are just sports. It's just a game, man. The real life is you. The real life is within you, man. It's you versus you. You know, it's, it's not... I mean, the money, you can make your money, but it's not all about the money, man. It's not about how much properties you have. It's not all about that. It's about you, you versus you. You can get your things and have that, but can you carry on long term? Because they're going to be long term. Or they could be short term. It all, all depends on how you take care of yourself. So this guy put his health on the line big time. And what I see from him, the way how he looks now, he doesn't look healthy. Looks kind of like this kind of punch drunk. You know, it seems a little bit slurry, a little bit slower. It doesn't look healthy. He looks aged from all the damage he taking, lost scar tissue. Man. But he's a veteran doing it, you know, hey, it is what it is. You know, everybody you know, everybody have the life to live and you pick and choose what you want to do. You know, you, you you can choose whatever you want to do. It's endless. You create your reality based on what you want. So um hats off to him though, man. Um his opponent here, though, Chris, man, Chris Gutierrez, man, I believe Taekwondo background has a more of a kickboxing, Taekwondo kind of base, pinpoint accurate striker, man. This guy's leg kicks are fire. And Frankie heavy on those leg. Frankie's heavy on that front leg because Frankie want to box. You know what I mean? He may, change, he may change it up a little bit and move around more because he knows that, you know, Chris going to land the heavy leg kicks. And Frankie does move, but he's still heavy on the front, man. And Chris going to just tear up that front leg, man. He's a, you know, a lot of combinations from Chris, too. And he's a pretty well-rounded guy, man. This guy, this guy is pretty good everywhere, man. And he's only getting better. Consistently getting better. I got Chris by KOTQ. I, I'm going to say second round, though. But it could it could be first, too. But I'm going to say Chris by KOTQ in the second round, guys. All right? Next fight here, guys. We got... Uh oh, Dustin Poirier versus Michael Chandler. It's the next big fight here. Um... Dustin Perry is pretty good everywhere, man. Um, decent boxing skills, heavier the hands. Um, we work the body. We, um, he worked the head, BJJ black belt. Um, yeah, this guy's pretty good, man. He, he, you know, he would gas out in the fight, but he's still there, though. He's there till the end, man. You have to finish him. I just submit him. Even try to knock him out, but he's still there. He's still a durable guy, and he's there to fight, man. So this guy's a fighter, man. Michael Chandler is also a fighter, has a wrestling background there. Um, but there's two difference here though, man. With Michael Chandler, striking is not on the level of Dustin Poirier, man. You know, it's not the same, man. He he usually dives in with punches, trying to close the distance quickly with overhands. But Dustin Poirier, man, he got the power on him, man, and and he gonna look. He's he's gonna look to finish Michael Chandler here. Michael Chandler has some power in his hands too, but it's two different levels of boxing here, man. Um, Michael Chandler will also gas out and he gasses out more when he when he starts to go for takedowns which he may mix up in this fight but man man I think Dustin Poirier 
is going to win this fight, guys. I can see Dustin Poirier finishing Michael Chandler, guys. I'm going to say Dustin Poirier by KOTQ, guys, in the first round. Next fight, the core main event, we got Carl Esparza versus Willie Zhang. Um, Carl Esparza, strong wrestling baser. She also looked for the crucifix. I believe she even looked for some submissions, too. The um, submission games is there, too. Um, but her stand-up, man, is not on the level of Willie Zhang, man. Not even close, man. Willie Zhang has improved, though. She's been doing more Muay Thai, been wrestling more. And she just looks way sharper. She took those two losses from Thug Rose, you know. I took it... You know, like to heart, like, yo, I'm going to step up and I'm going to work on this. Uh, I'm going to put the work in and, and then get better and, and work on all my weaknesses. And she, she's quick, pack power, strength-wise. She's going to be, in my opinion, more mentally, more physically, stronger person here, um, quicker, punching power, even down to the ground. And her ground defense not going to look bad in this fight because, because she's been working on it. You know, some it's same guys because I've been watching all the embedded. I told you I put my, a lot of work in this card. I watch all the embedded. I watch how the training going and everything like that. You know what I mean? So a lot of these fights, I can feel it. And when anybody feel it like this, that can give you the guys the outcome of how the guys gonna win and who's gonna win. You know what I mean? I'm kind of good at that. You know what I mean? So when I'm able to can put the work in, which I put the work in this card, usually get good outcomes. That is why I say support the channel. You know, you guys can donate to my PayPal. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get these videos out because I, I know what I'm talking about. And when I feel it, when, I, when I'm in it, I can feel it. I can I can feel the outcome. I can see the outcome, right? I'm liking Willie Zhang here, guys. I feel like she's just all around a better fighter here. Um, it's a five-round fight. But Carlos Pozo, she actually can get take on, get take on. But, man, Zhang is going to be on her. And like I said, with Carlos Pozo versus Thug Rose, there wasn't much action going on. So... There was no exhaustion. Each fighter wasn't really getting tired as much. Willie Zhang is going to put the pressure. And when you got pressure on you, then you got to defend. You got to defend. You might go for Tate. I'm going to go watch your head. Go watch your leg. I mean, it's too much going on at one time where your heart rate going to be going up. You're going to be all over the place. So you're going to get gassed out, man. So I'm liking Willie Zhang. I'm going to say Willie Zhang by KOTQ guys in the second round. Main attraction, what everybody been waiting for, is Rosana versus Alex Pereira. Prediction breakdown here, guys. I must start off like this. Um, I watch all the easy fights from the kickboxing, especially the last two fights against Alex Pereira. And from what I've seen there, both guys are kind of similar in a kind of way, right? Kind of, they kind of strike kind of similar. The only difference is that Israel is more loose. You know what I'm saying? He's, he, um, easy is more like water. He more flow. Right, it's more like a palm tree rocking back and forward, right? Kind of more light in the, more more light in the feet. With with Alex, Alex is a little bit more stiff on the movement, but he pack more power than Easy does. So, uh, if you sit in front of Alex and he can sit down in his punches, then he gonna knock you out. If Easy keep moving, it's gonna be harder for Alex, you know, to land that flush shot. Like I said, I feel Alex pack more power, but I'm not. I, but I don't feel i know he well i feel but i know he he i know i expect more power right uh, like like, like I'm, I'm like i said they're both kind of similar but then there's a rhythm to both guys that's kind of different though like is is more loose and more fluent with the movement more on his feet more loopy alex is more like rigid but but he has that freaking that freaking one hitter quitter and israel has that too but i feel alex sits down more right Easy has that too if he if he sits down in it, but he's more like light in his feet, right? Um, from the kickboxing matches, the first match, I felt like it was more like an even fight, and then the third round, I feel Easy had the third round, so it's kind of like even back and forward. The second fight was a robbery, though, and I'm gonna say why is a robbery, because in the second round of that second fight, um, Easy had Alex hurt. He hit him with a couple shots, and he hit him with one last big shot, bam. And the referee jumped in and stopped it. He jumped in and gave Alex a count. I believe I gave my eight count, I believe. What? It's like that's basically like if an MMA, you know, and, and then you have um friggin' um what's like what's like what's the referee name? Or any of the referees there. Um Herb Dean, right? And like, you know, the guy's getting a hit 
And then it looked like he's going to get knocked out, but then Hurt just jumped in and go, okay, stop here, guys. Let me just give you guys a count. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me just give this guy a count real quick. Oh, you can fight again. You can fight again. You can fight again. You know, even though they don't really give counsel that in MMA, you know, it's either you get knocked out or whatever, or you, or you, or you get sub submitted, or you just, or the fight's over. If you're getting tagged up, then the referee stopped it. But he, but in the kickboxing, it can be a little different. But the referee jumped in there and gave him a count. After Israel landed a big shot. So basically... If that fight kept on going and the referee didn't jump in, Alex would have got knocked out in that fight. So, so Israel would have won the, the, um, the second fight, basically. Now he went to the third, and I guess Israel felt like, oh, I got this fight when, you know, he's not really paying much attention. You know what I'm saying? He's kind of maybe taking it lightly you now. And he got caught. It happens. So it is what it is. But from what I see from both guys' skill set, they're pretty much kind of similar, but Israel is a little more... It's a little more fluent, you know what I'm saying? A little, a little more, I wouldn't say it's more, yeah, I, I would say it's slightly more te technical with the striking. He has more to offer with the striking, but Alex has a lot more to offer too with the flying knees and elbows and stuff like that, but he's just a little more rigid with it. Now, I'm not saying he's not good though and he can't connect because he's Papo and he's a dangerous fighter, right? Um, for Emma Mado, man, I mean, I feel, it's, it's, I feel Israel Asano, man, it's just, he's like steps ahead on MMA, I mean, the guy fought tough competition from Robert Whitaker twice, from Jahard Kananir, from Marvin Venturi, from Paula Casa, from Yul Romero. He fought tough guys that's going to push the pace from Derek Bronson. That's going to push a hard wrestling pace on him. If you look at Alex Pereira, he hasn't really had that. And he did have it early in his fight, and he got submitted, I believe. I think he did MMA earlier, right? And he got a rare naked choke back in 2015. So he, he hasn't really had that and even against Bruno, uh, Bruno Silva Bruno Silva was landing shots on him was tagging him up a little bit with, with, with um, shots and there was points of the fight where he kind of looked like he was kind of out of it you know you know, in, you know what I mean it's just the fights that he's getting and the Sean Strickland fights that's set for him to win that because Sean Strickland going to stand right in front of him and don't move like very stationary that's perfect so he got caught with a left hook and the Andre guy here the Andreas guy is just flying knee <laughs> Those guys are stationary right in front of him. Israel Sana has way more MMA experience now because it's not just kickboxing. Israel doesn't even have to kickbox him or strike with him. He could just take him down or ground and pound him or even submit him. There's so many different ways that Israel can win this fight. He doesn't have to stand up with him and strike. He doesn't, he doesn't have to do that. He has so much experience that he should win this fight, man. He should win this fight, dude. Not taking anything away from Alex Pereira. I'm not saying he can't win by a punch or a knockout. It's possible, man. But I'm going to go with easy. I'm going to say easy by KOTQ by in the second round. And it could be ground and pound. KOTQ second round, guys. Possible ground and pound. Quick look at the odds here, guys. What we're working with. Um, for, see what we're working with. Um, Carlos here and Nicola. Uh, I got Carlos as a little bit of favorite here. Uh, I disagree. I mean, it's kind of even fight, man. But I'm liking Nikolai for the win here, man. I feel like it's just it's more well well rounded. That's gonna put a put a heavy pace in Carlos. Yeah, so I'm going with Nikolai. He's he, I mean he's an underdog, slight tiny underdog, but it is what it is. So be careful with it. Play at your own risk. Julio Ars, Montel Jackson, Montel Jackson at 200 and something. Um, I'm liking Monte Jackson, slightly kind of high, because Julio Ars is an experienced guy, though, man. You guys still got to be careful. With the experienced guys, you got to be careful, man. It's not like Julio Ars is a can. You know what I'm saying? The guy can strike, and he has a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. The guy is skilled, man. So I think Jackson is a little bit too high. So still be careful with this one. I like Jackson, but I think it's too high. Troy versus Michael Giazzano. Troy, 175, 180. I really don't see nothing wrong with this, man. I mean, I feel like Troy should win this fight. Quicker fighter, he does more. He has more output. Um, KKK and Silvano, even fight, not a problem. If fights are even, it's great. But I'm liking Silvano. Matt Favola and Ottman. Um, got Favola as underdog. Um, got Ottman as 1 to 5. This fight here, I, put, I kind of put even, even though I say Ottman, the power and everything, but they both can come in there and start swinging, man. And when you have fights like that, anything is possible. So even match, but I like Ottman. Andre Prokeski and Wilton. Prokeski, 200 and something. Um... I just feel Andre is going to win this fight, dudes. I mean, even at 200, I mean, but still be careful. But I feel like he's just, I feel Wilton Thurman is kind of slow at the movement. 
he just let things go man he, he ended up dropping the ball so just still be careful I'll just, uh, yeah I mean still be careful but I feel like Andrea should win Iran Blanchfield whoa yeah, she's too high, dude. Oh my gosh, she's too high. See, that's what I was mentioning to you in the breakdown of the predictions. You gotta be careful like this. Guys, like said Molly McCann, in my opinion, has a better boxing, but I feel Erin is more well rounded as far as she can throw the hands when she will go for takedowns and look for submissions. But again, there's that point, man, of where you're closing a distance and your face is up in the air and just taking punches. So you just take that one shot. So, that Erin Blanchfield at 309 something, you gotta be careful with this one, man. Be very careful, guys. This fight here, be very careful. Demonet Rios, Ryan Span. Demonet Rios is 205, 230. Um, I'm liking Rios here, guys, but be careful. Like I said, Rios coming for two big losses. You just don't know how he's going to turn up. I pick Rios to win. But be freaking careful, man, because it, it just, you just never know, man. I mean, I mean, he could come in here and just look totally different. Just never know. Or he could come in here with, like, I'm with like revenge like I'm gonna come in here and just beat Ryan up real quick cause you know all of what I've been through you know I'm gonna show you know what I mean so but still be careful Brad Riddell and Renato even fight I don't disagree he got rid of a little bit on the dog but I could see this fight being even cause it can go either way guys Claudio Pulis and Dan Hooker got Dan Hooker 150 this is two be careful with this one man because if Dan Hooker hasn't been looking good and if Pulis jump on his legs and lock it up or just knee bar him or arguing or even a rear naked choke fight's over so this, this, this fight is a tough one so be very careful Chris Gutierrez Frankie Edgar yeah man Chris Gutierrez at 240 250 I don't, I don't see nothing wrong with that I think Frankie Edgar you know this is his last fight he's gonna he's, he's gonna retire man and and to me he does not look good it just doesn't look good man so yeah Alex Pereira, Israel Asano, Israel Asano 215-235, I don't disagree, man. I feel Israel Asano is an all-around better fighter here now. You know, even back then, I feel like he was not much, you know, he got knocked out. Yeah, I mean, any, 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 anybody can get knocked out, but he actually would have knocked out Alex in that fight, in that second round, man. And the ref jumped in and stopped it. Um, yeah, I feel Israel is more, is more the well-rounded fighter, the more experienced guy, I know. He should win this fight. Yeah, so, oh yeah, I'm missing a fight here. Dustin Poirier, I mean, Dustin Poirier is a favorite. Um, hopefully they didn't take him off the card because we don't see him there. Um, take a look here and see. I know Dustin Poirier is a favorite in that fight. He, at least he should be the favorite. Um, yeah, negative 230. Yeah, so you got um, Chandler's underdog. Yeah, I feel... If it doesn't prove you should win the fight, but still be careful, man, because Mike and Chandler, man, you know, he's still an experienced guy, too, so you never know, and he wrestles, grind, grind, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't take, and it's a three-round fight, it doesn't, doesn't take much, we saw Michael Chandler throw that front kick to um, Tony Ferguson, you know what I mean, and it doesn't really take much, so, it's one of those fights, man, it's just, sometimes you're predicting these fights, and then it doesn't happen the way you want it to happen, you know, that's just part of the game, man, um, yeah, so that's the odds breakdown there, guys. That's my prediction. I'm a breakdown. Um, guys, support the channel. Hit the thumbs up button so the videos can get out. You can subscribe to this channel. Um, you can donate to my PayPal account. Can I help with the channel? I can do this more full time. Give you guys better predictions, better breakdowns. <laughs> All right, that's about it, there, guys. Keep on kicking. One love out to everybody. And oh.